Hi, I'm Danny Ramos, and welcome to this week's edition of Hispanic Speak Out TV, brought to you on Bright House Cable every Tuesday night at 9.30 p.m. Um, I want to introduce you in case uh, you don't know. This is the Hispanic license plate, the first Hispanic license plate in the United States of America. And this license plate was passed by the Florida State Legislature last year. It is now available in 360 DMV offices throughout the state of Florida, and you can have this license plate on your car. Um, it commemorates the 500-year anniversary of Hispanic settling Florida. It says on it in 1513, and all the proceeds from this plate go to needy Hispanic students so that they can go to college. So be a proud Hispanic, put this plate on your car, celebrate the 500-year anniversary, and at the same time, help Hispanic students go to college. Um, we also, our organization also publishes this book. This book is available in 165 7-Eleven stores throughout Central Florida. And it has great information about how to hire a lawyer, about foreclosure, bankruptcy. It is very, very informative. If you need a lawyer and you need to know more about your problem, this little booklet is absolutely free of charge and it's in every 7-Eleven. Just go in, pick it up. You don't have to pay anything and just walk out the door with it. Um, as you can see on the cover, we feature Michael Matthews, which is a great, he is a top, top injury lawyer. We also feature uh, Tracy Keegan. Tracy Keegan is the person that you got to call if you have traffic violations. And then on the back cover, for people who are Spanish language dominant, we feature Lisa Figueroa, who is a criminal defense attorney. These three are top lawyers in Central Florida. Pick up this book in 165 7-Eleven stores. Um, it's a great tool if you have a legal issue that you have to face. Okay, let's get on with the show now. Hello, Lolita. How are you today? <laughs> Lolita's doing wonderful. Thank Good. You. I'm so happy. I'm how getting, did you get, I'm such, a nice, to my did you get such a nice name? I don't know. Someone by the name of Mr. Ramos named me. I don't, oh, okay. I don't know. <laughs> he thought I should have a Spanish name. Oh, yeah? Okay. Yeah. So uh, maybe we'll change it for next week. Yeah, well, we could. Dora. Yeah, we could. I could be Dora. Yeah, well, oh. we, can, we can come up I with mean, different I kinda, names. I like Lolita. Baby. Lolita. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of good Spanish names that we can call you. Oh. you know? so, I just think it'll confuse the audience, though. You think so? Yeah, we you better keep the same face? Yeah, same face. Okay. Different Hispanic name. Okay. <laughs> so listen, who are we going to beat up today? Okay. That's up to you. I like okay. you lead. <laughs> I had an experience with 5-3 Bank, and uh, since the banking thing is all, I'm going to be making comments every week about things I hear in the grapevine about the way you're getting burned in banks. Okay, 5-3 Bank has a point system program attached to their debit card. So if you have, if you gather 15,000 points, and when you sit down with, to open up a checking account, they're going to tell you how great the point system is, and you're going to get cash back if you get enough points. Okay, so you open up your debit card and uh, you can, um, you need to get 15,000 points in order to get $50 back. Okay, but in order to get the $50 back, you have to spend $30,000 with your debit card. And they charge you $3.95 per month as a service charge. So they're charging you $3.95 every month to be part of the program. But if you don't reach the $30,000, then not only do they charge you the three ninety five, but you don't get any money back. Okay, so <laughs> what they've done is they're charging you three ninety five, but you got to spend thirty thousand dollars. Who spends thirty thousand dollars on a debit card? I, I have no idea. So they can't lose either way because they're getting the three ninety five, which is forty eight bucks. Okay, who wants to join? And the you get fifty dollars back. If you do spend the 30. This is so analytical. So you're making $2 for the whole year. That's crazy. After spending $30,000. And this is And if you don't bank? spend the $30,000, they get three ninety five dollars additional for you being part of the point system. Stop it. I'm telling you. <laughs> so this lady at 5-3 says, no. I said, what's that three ninety five dollars in my account? It's world debit. It was said world debit. World okay, debit. what is it? It's your point system. Okay. How much do I have to spend to get $50? 30000 What? Okay. Whenever you go into a bank, they give you a point system, read the fine print. No okay. doubt. <laughs> now we got Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo, after much controversy, is now charging people to deposit money in their bank. Okay? So now you go to Wells Fargo, you open right. up a checking account. I've heard this. Okay? Mm -hmm. And now... If you put $2,000 in there, which they go and lend to other people and t charge interest to make Correct. money, and they invest it, but now they're going to charge you an extra $5 besides the printing, besides all the other fees, Correct. they're now charging you a flat $5. Don't put your money in Wells Fargo, okay? 
you got to get back and demand that these banks stop charging you these stupid fees, which are just meant to take money out of your pocket. So as far as Wells Fargo is concerned, I wouldn't open up a bank account in Wells Fargo. Well, let's let's talk about this just for a minute. Just which for a one? minute. About the commercial banks that you're speaking of. Because okay. here we didn't get the chase yet. But that that's some. This is okay. Is this about what I was talking about earlier? Yeah. Well, this has to do with investment money. This is not about checking. No, accounts. it has to do with crook. Crooked well, well, bankers. Yeah, well. <laughs> it has to do with, with money disappearing. But here's, here's what I want to tell you because I think people need to really educate themselves and go out there and learn what is happening with the big commercial banks. When the government lent out TARP money of $460 billion, where the banks now pretty much have become a slave, I guess is a word maybe to use, I don't know, to pay back this money supposedly, but it's really coming from the taxpayers. My belief is that at some point, these banks will become the government bank, meaning they will have every right, just like the IRS on a federal level, will have every right to go in and take out monies that, have, that are owed. So for an example, if you have bad credit or you haven't paid creditors, or if Fannie Mae has picked up your loan as now a government well, the, subsidized. The department stores are doing that. This, this week, Macy's took $503 out of my account, okay, without authorization. I went to Macy's and I said, listen, I want you to debit my payment for my credit card every single month. And it comes out on July 9th. And I want you to debit two hundred and twenty-four dollars mm -hmm. every month. Okay. I, the next morning, there was five hundred dollars missing out of my account. Wow. So they went in and took five hundred dollars. I call them up and I say, "Okay, Macy's, you took out five hundred dollars." No, that can't be. Well, I'm talking to some guy in India, <laughs> and he didn't understand what I'm trying to tell him. Okay, that I wanted it taken out on July 9th and the amount. Mm -hmm. So he takes $500 out. I speak to Macy's, they say, you're absolutely right, sir. We took the $500. We're going to send you a check, okay? Yeah, but what happens if you're like she's, she missing? Said, she said, I couldn't, deb I, they couldn't put it back in. They can take it out, but they can't put it back exactly. in. Exactly, you know, can't get a credit. They're gonna send wow. you, well, they get to use the money for another 10 days. So what happens? The day after they tell me they're going to mail me the check, they told me, Mr. they called me, said, Mr. Ramos, guess what? We processed your check, but we only sent you less money because we took the payment that was due next July out. Now, this was in the middle of June. So they debited my account again okay, for the money which was due almost four weeks ahead. Wow. Okay, and they didn't tell me that either. So, yep. see, there's proof so, right there. don't allow anybody to debit your account. Stop giving out permi permission to get into your bank well, account. Well, and my, and my recommendation, too, is to go to your local bank, if it's a, you know, a credit union or a community bank, someone that you know you can walk in if you have issues like this, that you can sit and you can talk to them, not necessarily go and have to go speak with somebody in India because they don't want to pay American people to work here in the United States and cut dollars and save mm -hmm. money. So. You know, I've been saying this since five years ago. Get your major investments, savings accounts, whatever you have, liquid mm -hmm. cash, get them out of these, before, these commercial before banks. Before you open up a bank account in any bank, find out where their customer service representatives are, mm -hmm. okay? If they're in India and Pakistan, you know you're going to have a problem. It's going to be problematic sometime in the future. Right. You're going to run into a problem. You're calling halfway around the world. They operate on a different time zone. And not only that, they have all your pertinent information. They have your social right. security number. They have your addresses. They have your pictures. They have everything in some third world country on the other side of the planet. That's outrageous. That's outrageous. Big brother. You know, and I get debits. They debited my account, 500 bucks. You know, there's got to be something in the Debt Fair Collection Act that protects consumers against this. But you know, so nobody has, has the time to fight. Well, nobody. And the only way you can fight is on the consumer level by asking questions. Where do you have your customer service? You have your customer service in Pakistan or in China, okay? Don't open up your bank account there because you're gonna have problems because those people are hiring people at a dollar an hour, two dollars an hour, instead of hiring US labor. So don't do that, just don't do that. Ask them that question. Also check your minimum, the, the interest that mm -hmm. they're charging you sure. for minimum pay. They want you to pay the minimum amount on your credit card. 
They really do. Why? Because they're charging you 82% interest. Absolutely. Well, you, I've been telling people they need to start paying off this debt, and we have to stop as a society of getting credit. We have to stop. Well, yeah. Because that is what makes these banks so powerful is the fact that we go out and we got to buy new cars, we got to buy new clothes. We, if you can't pay cash, don't buy it. Don't well, buy the car it. thing That's is very difficult system. for people. But, you know, stop yeah. using your credit cards to buy clothes, shoes, and food. Stop that. You don't have to do it. Stop mm -hmm. using your cards to do that. Because you know what the reality is? On $100 that you put on your credit card, 100 bucks, mm -hmm. you know how much you're going to pay in interest? $82 of that is interest. So when you pay the payment of $100, okay, you're only paying $17 or $18 towards the principal. $82 is interest. That's how the banks get their marble yes, lobbies, of course. and how that's how the one percent stay the one percent. Stay the one percent because they live off us. They found a new slavery way. <laughs> uh, they legal. found a way, a legal way to make slaves. Legalized mafia is what yeah, I call legal, it. Well, it's legalized slavery. You know, economic <laughs> slavery. So, and I'm not a radical. I don't want you to understand I'm not a radical, but I'm talking economic sense here because if you look at your bank statements, it's written there. If you call customer service, you're calling a foreign country that they don't even understand and they have all your data. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's no legal repercussion response that you can do to sue somebody in Pakistan. You know, it, it just doesn't work that way. So all of these things are being done to prop up a lot of, lot of 1% people who are making a load of money mm -hmm. or for you and you have to stop allowing them to do that. That's right. So go to when you go to Walmart, don't use a credit card. Pay cash. Okay? What we wanted to talk about Chase Manhattan Bank. Uh, Chase Bank, mm -hmm. a week ago, the president of Chase Bank said, I lost two billion dollars. It mm -hmm. was unfortunate. We made a wrong move. Two billion dollars of <laughs> depositor money. Right? Just disappeared. Where did it yeah. go? Hmm. He didn't say. Didn't say. Didn't, didn't say, say what it was. Two billion. But you had some news. Yeah, some news came out. I believe it was Friday, if I'm not mistaken. I was alerted on my phone uh, and an email that came to me. It actually has, has now increased to $9 billion, which is basically saying to me, the person who told me a year ago, that the real figure is really between about $25 billion to $30 billion. On Chase. On Chase alone, not the other banks that also so, play. So where, where does this money go to when they lose it? How do they lose it? <laughs> Who do they give it to? I mean, I, I have yet to see a newspaper article that says, oh, the money was invested by Chase Bank mm -hmm. in this particular business, and that business went out of business, mm -hmm. and all these people are employed. I don't hear that story. Well, what my understanding is, this is coming from securitization of pensions and 401 k. So you're saying the pension system is now becoming insolvent? That's, that's, that's basically what you're that's saying. That's what we're saying. They're draining, they're losing money from the and pension you're, And if people are going to realize, I'm, I'm sad to say, I believe a little too late. And I think it's one of the biggest scams other than the, the foreclosure, the mortgage. You know, and, and you know what? <laughs> Nobody's gone to jail. No the one's gone to jail. The biggest theft in the history of the world. And no, and no one has gone to jail. They, they, they took um, uh, Bernie Madoff. They sent him to jail yeah. because he stole $50 million or something like that. Okay? It's nothing but, what they've done. But he did, wasn't in the banking system. He did it outside <laughs> the banking system. If Bernie was in the banking system, they would have made him chairman of the board. That's right. He's you know? <laughs> <laughs> chairman of finances. Exactly, exactly. Okay, please take heed to what we've been telling you about the banks. Do not make minimum payments on your card, credit cards. Do not use your credit card for small purchases that you can buy with cash. It might be convenient, but they're going to sock it to you. Okay? Uh, the Wells Fargo, $5 a checking account. Go into Wells Fargo and say, you know what? Keep your checking account. We don't need it. We're giving you money and you're charging us to give you money. That's ridiculous. And as far as Chase is concerned, $2 billion? That guy should have been fired. Why is he still president of this bank? What does that tell you? It went to $9 billion and he's still there. It went to there. $9 billion and he's still there. In fact, you he'll know? probably get his big bonus, I'm sure, soon. No doubt. <laughs> this is Danny Ramos. Uh, we're going right now to interview uh, a guy who's running for Osceola um, School Board. Very intelligent guy, a real newcomer and, and rising star. He's going to be a rising star in the political arena. Uh, we're going to take a fade in and fade out to let him get onto his chair and we can slide over. Okay? Back in three seconds. Welcome back from our fade in and fade out break. And again, I want to repeat to you um, the information about the Hispanic Achievers license plate. The Hispanic Achievers license plate can be purchased in any of 360 DMV locations. 
Department of Motor Vehicle uh, Registration Offices throughout the state of Florida. This plate commemorates the 500 year anniversary of Hispanic settling in Florida. That's 250 years before George Washington was born. Hispanics were living in Florida. And the plate says 1513 on it, and it commemorates the 500 year anniversary. This plate um, is now available and you can buy it and all the proceeds from the plate go to scholarships to uh, needy students throughout the state of Florida. So purchase this plate, it's a good thing to do. Uh, show your Hispanic pride by having it on your car and uh, help poor kids get into college. One more thing, um, this book is produced by our organization. It's called the um, Consumer Lawyers Directory. It's chock full of lawyers and information. So before you hire a lawyer, get a copy of this book. This book is available free of charge at 165 7 Eleven for stores throughout Central Florida. And it gives you great information about how to hire a lawyer, what questions to ask a lawyer, uh, about foreclosure, divorce, um, and other legal issues that you need to know about. And it's absolutely free. So pick it up at any 7 Eleven store. And uh, it has a whole list of great attorneys that you can hire, including an attorney called Tracy Keegan. Tracy Keegan is a DUI traffic attorney. She's the best in the business. So if you want to get rid of a ticket, you got a ticket called Tracy Keegan. And then we also have a lawyer called Michael Matthews. Michael Matthews is on the cover of this book. He's an injury lawyer. And he's probably one of the top five injury lawyers in Central Florida. So pick up this book and you're gonna get a lot of information and it's all free of charge. Um, how are you, Lolita? We just did a fade in. I know I said hello to you twice today. <laughs> Thank welcome. Goodness. Welcome. Yeah, how are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you. Okay, you that go. was a scathing conversation mm. we just had five minutes ago yeah. about all this stuff on foreclosures and what's going on in the mm. country. But Great. now we have Raul Bas Bas Ban Banasco, Banasco yes, who sir. comes from the Bronx yes, okay, originally, sir. and I came from the Bronx. So we have a little uh, conversation before he came on talking about uh, the old days. And uh, he's here now and he's a candidate for Osceola County School Board in District 2. Yes. What motivated you to get involved in politics in Osceola County and run for the school board? Well, um, uh, first of all, thank you for having me on the show. And one of the exciting things is both my older children are school board teachers in Osceola County. And after 25 years of retiring from state government, working in public safety, it was my opportunity now to sort of make a difference in my community. I have served in several leadership roles, um, both with the Toho Water Authority as the vice chair and several county uh, appointed advisory boards. And I think not only after 25 years in the public safety arena and government and having children that are teachers and my children and my grandchildren going to the Osceola County school system, I can make a difference. And in District 2, the seat is open. And it's important that we bring a sense of, um, of cohesiveness, respect, and communication to the Osceola County School Board. And I think we need that more now than ever, given the economic challenges, all the adversity we are, as adults are facing, but more importantly, the youth of today. What do you see that needs to be changed? Because some, when a person gets motivated to do something, um, if they're going to get motivated to paint their house, it's because they don't like the color of the house. Okay, so they get to the point where they say, I'm hating this color of this house, I'm going to paint it. Yeah. So what, what change do you see that you would like to enact? Yeah. I mean, Well, one of the things, first of all, becoming a Osceola County School Board member, and I can tell you from this perspective, is that we need to work as a cohesive group. Every board member, we have five districts in Osceola County, and we have to work as a team because at the end of the day, we need to work with the educational community. And when I say the education community, the focus should be the youth. And if we're not motivating the youth, we have challenges at home, as we do in school, as well as some of these high school students have to work to help their families survive. And I think one of the biggest things is providing that, that technology, that new way of teaching, learning objectives that the students are engaged. There's a lot of peer pressure out in society, especially in the youth. And I think we have to listen to the students. I think 25 years in government and in the criminal justice field, I can tell you I've seen the negative side of the business. And I think one of the biggest thing is investing in our youth. My slogan is running for my family and yours because if there's one thing I've learned after 25 years in the criminal justice system is you have to listen. And I think right now we're in a critical point in society, especially in Osceola County, if we do not listen to the youth, 
we're not going to go in the right direction. They have a big investment. They live in those schools more than teachers do to a degree. And we need to get them involved at the table to speak with the leadership of the schools, see what's going to engage them so they'll take an interest in a vocational trade or going on to universities. Okay. Um, Hispanics have probably the highest dropout in the nation. How are Osceola schools faring with the dropout? Well, we're pretty consistent. In my district, we, it's almost 75% a Hispanic district, and we have a very high dropout. One of the challenges is we have language barriers as well. Our BVL area is predominantly Puerto Ricans. They come from Puerto Rico, and we have a lot of folks who come from up north. But we are trying to instill that the second language shouldn't be a barrier. I think we all understand that there's a lot of pressure that comes with that. You come from a, an island, a community that the first language was Spanish, but we need to really engage them. Keep them from moving into the criminal activity. Stay focused on the important stuff, which is at least get a high school degree or a GED so that you can move on forward and not only be part of a productive adulthood, but also make your parents proud that you, they've made this ultimate sacrifice, many of them, to leave that beautiful island to have a better future and that they can see that dream come true. Uh, is, is there a gang issue in Osceola County? Yeah, uh, I think... In the school system? I, I'm, I cannot say 100%, but there is a lot of gang activity throughout almost everywhere in society. I know because in my district there is a lot of gang activity in the community and I think the sheriff's office does an amazing job trying to combat that stuff and I think we he's focused and the sheriff's office and the other law enforcement agents focus on preventive measures, going out educating the youth because what we often don't realize is the pressure is not only at the high school level, it's even starting at the elementary level. Mm -hmm. Children are becoming very savvy, they're very uh, smart in their mannerism, there's that other factor is bullying and technology. I mean, every kind of social media is really accessible and we know even kids as early as fifth or sixth grade, they have their own iPhones, they're communicating. So I can tell you that's one of the challenges that all of us are fading, facing, but I know Osceola County is facing that and I think we're doing a good job. But I think at the end of the day, we need to just redirect that attention into something positive. I'll tell you something else, sorry to uh, interject, but um, is, wasn't there, I know in Celebration, where I live, um, that it's mandatory that they wear uniforms. Correct. And I gotta tell you, I think there's something to be said for that, because you know, when kids have to wear a certain uniform, they can't wear the pants below the, you know, mm -hmm. the butt line. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and I believe that even watching Celebration children in elementary, the middle school, being in these uh, mandated uniforms, it does make a difference. So what do you feel about that in, in regards to... Um, you know, growing up in the Bronx, I, I can tell you it was in a different area, but I, I support that. I think there's been some other local counties in the news that have voted against it. I think it was, I think, I know Osceola County was the first one to step out mm -hmm. and do that. Mm -hmm. And they, we received a lot of criticism because I was in the community, not involved in the school board, but it was the right thing to do. When I talk to my grandchildren and my friends' kids and my teenage child, and to know that they have a standard uniform, mm -hmm. there's a less pressure and competition That's out right. there. There's more a uh, sense of pride, because you know I was raised that from your first impression, you perhaps will never have a second impression. Mm -hmm. And I think there's still a sense of freedom, because I think some of the challenges some of the other counties are saying is mm -hmm. they feel their children's life or their freedom of expressing themselves has been stifled. I disagree with right. that. Right. You can dress in appropriate manner pretty much with some variety mm -hmm. of uniforms as far as colors. And at the end of the day, the teachers, that's one less thing for school administrators and education and law enforcement to focus on. Mm -hmm. with, because we all know there's a lot of a theft and, and, and crime activity mm -hmm. goes on in schools. And I think that that is a positive step. Well, they in the identify right themselves too as gang right, members. Correct. I mean, there's certain things they wear. Certain that they way know. they wear right. their pants, right. their shirts, how they tuck mm -hmm. the colors. So when they have a pretty much a smaller variety, mm -hmm. that's the colors they have to focus on. And mm -hmm. it's also instills, in my opinion, a great deal, a great deal of structure. Mm -hmm. And I know it's a hardship for some families, but at the end of the day. It's all about making an investment in the youth mm -hmm. and the children. Well, I think of it's the next less future. expensive. I mean, I, I shop for my son and I go to a Walmart or to, I don't go to a uniform store, and we get khakis very inexpensively and different colored colored shirts that are, what, $5.99, $6.99. And, 
you know, we, we get quite a bit for them. I think it's cheaper than them going out and thinking they have to wear Louis Vuitton or some of these crazy brands that they Correct. charge you tons of money. So um, if you were to be elected in this position, is that something that you would fight for on behalf of your district? When I win, <laughs> District 2, I'm definitely going to continue to support that. I think it's important. I think at some point another aspect that I think we need to look at down the road is even the footwear. Mm -hmm. I think we've done an amazing job with the shirts and the pants, but the footwear is the next challenge because as we all know, sneakers run anywhere from $20 mm -hmm. to $300 mm -hmm. and there has been an increase across America. I've heard stories being in, in the public sector now in criminal justice that people have lost their lives over a pair of sneakers mm -hmm. and I think mm -hmm. we have been fortunate in this area not to have a situation but I think that's one of the things we might need to look at down the road have some conformity and consistency on the footwear well, there's as well. a great program that 104.1 does the monsters where they do um, where they get tennis shoes for turning in weapons and right. it's a huge effort in Central Florida and they do really well with it where people and the kids come and they trade out their knives and whatever for a pair of tennis shoes so maybe that's something to consider <laughs> yeah, I, it'll help I the think, gang activity go yes, down, right? It, yes, it, but I think it has to be mandated because, it, yeah. you know, it, this is something that is really, really serious and mm -hmm. it would be preventative. Yes. Big time. Mm -hmm. Especially, you know, if, if even if they just do light brown pants and blue, blue shirts and, you know, black shoes, whatever. But it, w it would take away a really strong edge on gang formation, yeah. I think. Yeah. And, and, you know, believe it or not, in many of the private schools or, you know, charter schools, they do stick to the basic black sneaker or the white sneaker. Mm -hmm. You know, they give you a little bit of variety, but doesn't have all that fancy bling bling mm -hmm. that often becomes a distraction in the learning environment. Yeah. Absolutely. And um, a question I have for you, because watching last year, um, being in the foreclosure world and, and witnessing especially who is really affected in this, it's children. The one thing that I get so frustrated with in this whole environment of he did, she did, he didn't, she did, I mean, it's constantly pointing fingers at the adults and the banks and the mistakes that they made, but the bottom line is these children are really affected by foreclosures and being homeless. And I know in celebration in our district, it increased so much that we were actually shocked that we had to do a group to really help these kids to be able to feed them, clothe them, and make sure they had a place to, to go. My understanding, it's going to get worse this year coming yes, up. Yes, it is. One of the things I know we're fortunate in Osceola County is that we have the Osceola Education Foundation that has a, a great support from the community, mm -hmm. and they're actually providing a lot of uh, opportunities as far as to the homelessness, whether it be clothing, mm -hmm. toiletries, but you're correct. I know in Osceola County, I've spoken to many teachers as well as many residents in the community where their children unfortunately are living out of their vehicles, mm -hmm. motels, they come to school. I think one of the biggest challenges to school districts across Central Florida, especially Osceola County, is the summer school program. They have children who are enrolled, mm -hmm. the, they have to provide them with meals. As often I heard first-hand experience of some of the teachers that don't get paid what I think they should get paid for the work they do. And on a Friday, go and sacrifice and bring in some snack bars because they know that child will pretty much go hungry all weekend. Yeah. And that is such a challenge because how can you teach that next generation? You can't. And how can you have them absorb the information it's and the knowledge? It's a shame that America is Correct. allowing this to happen yes. in our school systems. Well, it Ron really Balaka was here uh, two weeks ago and he said that uh, the dropout started pre-K. They started pre-K, so yeah, that, that says a lot scary yes. as hell. Um, thank you for coming, Raul. We we'll hope thank you. all the success you can in, in winning and bringing new vision to Orange uh, Osceola County. Um, before we close, I want to again uh, remind you, get the Hispanic Achievers license plate. It provides scholarship money for needy students throughout the state of Florida. Be a proud Hispanic. Celebrate the 500 year anniversary of Hispanics uh, arriving in Florida and uh, help your community by getting this plate down at your DMV. Um, again, um, this is Danny Ramos on Hispanic Speak Out. Raul, thank you again. Lolita, thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> and we will see you next week here on uh, Tuesday at 9.30 p.m. And if you have any information you want to send in, send it to us, nhca at bellsouth.net. And if you have some community uh, announcements you want, send it to that email address. This is Danny Ramos, Lolita, and Raul. We'll see you next week. <laughs>